Hello everyone, welcome to Pilot Community. Yet another video on A320 system series. So today we are going to learn about the A320 pressurization system. So to put it up in simple words, the pressurization inside the aircraft is maintained by regulating the flow of air that is exiting the pressurized regions in the aircraft. So this is achieved by controlling the outflow valve which is present at the tail section on the right hand side. So before we get into the pressurization system itself, let us see the different regions inside the aircraft that are pressurized. So we have cockpit, avionics, the forward and aft cabin zone, the forward and aft cargo section. These are all the pressurized sections inside the aircraft. Then the redome, the air conditioning bay and the tail section. These are the unpressurized regions inside the aircraft. So let us now see the different components of the pressurization system. So we have two cabin pressure controllers which are located at the forward section of the avionics bay. So these are two exactly same programmed computers whose job is to signal the motors at the outflow valves as to how much they should open in different flight phases. And these uh, cabin pressure controllers, they receive signal from the emergency rammer inlet flap, the three ADIRSs, the FMGC, the landing gear control and interface unit, the engine interface unit, after which they generate signals to the ECAM system display and generate ECAM warning under emergency scenarios. Then we have one residual pressure control unit that is RPCU which was not there in the earlier days but later on after an incident where the cabin door was violently opened it was realized that such a system should be there inside the aircraft. So what the system does is it automatically depressurizes the aircraft in case of abnormal residual pressure on ground. So the logic that it follows is when the outflow valve is not fully open and both CPCs are failed or when we are in manual mode and the aircraft is on ground and all engines are shut down or all the ADIRS indicate an airspeed below 100 knots. So all these conditions has to be satisfied for the outflow valve to be fully open. Then we have one outflow valve with three motors out of which two are automatic and one operate in manual mode. The two automatic motors they receive signal from two cabin pressure controllers and the one which is in manual mode receives signal directly from the cockpit panel. Then we have uh, one control panel which is there in the overhead panel in the cockpit which is not used in the normal mode of operation but in certain abnormal scenarios can be used from the overhead panel in the cockpit. Then we have two safety valves which are there at the rear pressure bulkhead which cannot be viewed from outside the aircraft. Now coming to the modes of operation. So we have two modes of operation, automatic operation and manual operation. So in automatic operation, the flight crew does nothing to control the system and it is fully automatic. But the system needs to be monitored from the cruise page and the cabin pressure page. So in automatic mode, there could be a situation where the landing airport elevation is not there in our FMGS data. So in that case, we need to select it manually from the overhead panel of the cockpit. Let us see how it is done. So here we are in the cockpit of Airbus. So in the overhead panel, this is the cabin pressure panel that we are talking about. So getting a better view of this panel, you can see that this is the knob that is used to control the landing elevation and the readings that are marked is from minus 2000 to 14000. So every reading is in thousands. You can change this knob to control the landing airfield elevation and cross check it on your ECAM panel. On your cabin pressurization page, you can see that currently it is set to minus 1700 feet. So let us say that now I change it to mean sea level. You can see zero feet here is displayed. So use this knob and cross check it on the pressurization page in the ECAM to see what elevation you have set. Then after that we have manual operation in which the flight crew needs to control the cabin altitude via the overhead panel. Let us see how it is done. So coming to the overhead panel in the cabin pressure panel to go into the manual mode we need to select this push button to man. And then after that using the manual vertical speed toggle switch we can change the vertical speed of the cabin rate of climb or descent. So here we have the cabin pressure page. So notice by selecting the vertical speed to down you can see that the outflow valve is closing and the, the cabin altitude is going down. Since both the packs are on we have a flow of air inside the aircraft and by closing the outflow valve the aircraft gets pressurized. Now coming to the pressurization profile which is essentially a plot of uh, z-axis against time. So the z-axis denotes altitude and you can see that there are two types of profile here in our diagram. 
So the first one indicates the aircraft altitude and the second one indicates the cabin altitude. Now we know that uh, altitude is essentially a measure of pressure and we're talking about pressurization. So uh, as we're increasing the pressure inside the cabin, we are essentially decreasing the altitude as felt by the occupants of the aircraft. So the aircraft actual altitude will be much more as compared to the altitude that is felt inside. So this particular profile shows how the pressurization is done so as to achieve a comfortable level inside the aircraft. So when the aircraft is on ground, the outflow valves are fully open. The pressure outside is equal to pressure inside. And when the takeoff power is set, the aircraft starts to pressurize itself at a rate of 400 feet per minute. What this means is uh, the aircraft pressurizes itself at the rate so that the altitude drop is felt at a rate of 400 feet per minute until the differential pressure reaches 0.1 psi, meaning the pressure inside the aircraft is 0.1 psi higher than the pressure outside. And the reason behind this is pretty interesting, which is essentially the ground effect. Because uh, the outflow valves are at the tail section of the aircraft and uh, initially when the aircraft lifts off, it is having a high angle of attack. So because of ground effect, the pressure as felt in the fuselage of the aircraft is much higher. So that could cause ingestion of foreign materials through the outflow valve. So to avoid that, the pressure inside is maintained 0.1 psi higher than the pressure outside. Then we have lift off and the aircraft climbs at a much higher rate of climb as compared to the cabin. So this is achieved by closing of the outflow valves at a certain rate so that there is a comfortable experience. And uh, this pressurization happens according to a pre-programmed law that takes into account the aircraft's actual rate of climb and your uh, cruising altitude. So whatever will be the cruising altitude, uh, the cabin altitude will be much less than that and it will be maintained according to your delta pressure of less than equal to 8.06 psi. The reason for this 8.06 psi is, is actually the structural limitation of your aircraft fuselage. And it is also known as a pressurization cycle. So every time the aircraft does a particular sector, its pressurization cycle is noted down. And this actually determines the life of the aircraft as well. Then the aircraft begins descending and the cabin begins its continuous descent. This is a very interesting point. Here the cabin restricts its rate of descent to 750 feet per minute, regardless of what the aircraft rate of descent will be. The maximum rate of descent of the cabin will be 750 feet per minute. And again, you can see here that the aircraft has pressurized itself 0.1 psi higher than the pressure outside. For the same reason as we discussed during takeoff, because of the ground effect, we don't want the foreign objects to enter through the outflow valve. So the pressure at touchdown is maintained 0.1 psi higher than the pressure of your aerodrome. So 55 seconds after the touchdown, the outflow valves will begin to open and the pressure will normalize. That is, the delta P will become zero. So this is how pressurization is done inside the aircraft under normal operations. So coming to the controls and indication part. So we have already seen this cabin pressurization panel and we have discussed most of it. So I'm going to discuss only the part which I have missed out earlier, uh, which is actually the switching of the automatic system. Coming to the ECAM page. You can see that currently system 1 is in operation. So system 1 is basically combination of CPC1 and its associated motor. So what if this system 1 is not working uh, optimally as it should? I'm not saying that the system is faulty. It is just not functioning as optimally as it should. So in a situation like this, the pilots may come to a conclusion that they should switch over to the system 2. Now the procedure to do that will be to go to the overhead panel first and then select this manual push button for at least 10 seconds. And after the 10 seconds have passed, we again switch it back to the auto mode and go to the pressurization page. And you can see here that system 2 is selected now. So this is the procedure to switch from system 1 to system 2. One important thing to be noted down here is that in case of a system failure, there will be automatic changeover from one system to another. But since here the system is not working optimally, so pilot input is required to manually switch over from system 1 to system 2. Then coming to the ditching push button. As you can see, it is a guarded push button and it is used only in emergency scenarios when we are putting the aircraft on water. That is, we are ditching the aircraft. So we don't want the water to come inside the aircraft through different valves. So what this ditching push button does is, it signals to close the outflow valve, the emergency ram air inlet valve, the avionics ventilation inlet and extract valves and the pack flow control valves. So just by pressing this push button, all those valves that are below the flotation line will be closed. And one important thing to be noted is, if the ditching push button is set to on when the low pressure ground cart is connected and all the doors are closed, a differential pressure will start building up inside the aircraft. 
having discussed the controls coming to the indication so in the ecam cabin pressurization page we have the landing elevation auto auto means that the data has been taken from the fmgc and we don't have to do anything about it so it is already taken into account the elevation of the landing airfield which is 3000 feet now i have demonstrated you earlier how to switch it to manual you can manually also set the landing field elevation if it is not there in the fmgc then coming to the analog and digital presentation of uh, delta p that is the differential pressure so it is in green and normal modes of operation but when the pressure drops below minus 0.4 psi or it goes above 8.5 psi this delta p will turn amber and also when the delta p is greater than 1.5 psi during the flight phase 7 which basically corresponds to the phase of flight when we are 800 feet above the ground till the point we touch down so during this phase of flight if the delta p is greater than 1.5 psi this digital presentation of delta p will pulse then we have the vertical speed presentation both digital and analog this digital presentation will start pulsing when the vertical speed goes beyond 1750 feet per minute and it shall reset only when the vertical speed drops below 1650 feet per minute then coming to the cabin altitude cabin altitude will appear in green in normal range of operation but it will start to pulse when the cabin altitude goes beyond 8800 feet 8800 feet included and it will only reset when the cabin altitude drops below 8600 feet this will turn into red when the cabin altitude goes above 9550 feet so these are things that needs to be kept in mind and you can find these data in your fcom so if you go to the controls and indication section you will find all these values i've already talked about the system 1 and system 2 the two modes of operation in automatic mode and if you happen to select the manual push button man will be displayed here in green then we have the position of the safety valve this is position of either two of the safety valves so if either one of them opens it will be displayed here so the safety valves they open only when the cabin differential pressure is between 8.2 to 8.9 psi the outflow valve position is also shown in this diagram as you can see here so this inlet and outlet valve position that has been shown here it pertains to the ventilation system that shall be discussed in the next module now i have talked previously that this cabin altitude it turns red when the cabin altitude increases beyond 9550 feet but uh, what when the aircraft is operating in high altitude airports so in that particular case there is a special provision given in some of the aircrafts for high altitude operation and when you go to the overhead panel in the oxygen panel you will find this high altitude landing push button which is guarded push button after discussing giving the proper briefing the pilots will arm this push button and uh, we will not get any master warning associated with the cabin altitude going beyond 9550 feet so there are three types of requirements for these types of operation the first requirement is of that of the aircraft itself the aircraft needs to be qualified for such operations not all aircrafts have such kind of modifications so you need to consult your fcom and find out which aircrafts have this type of qualification and the other qualification is that of the airline the airline need to obtain the air operator permit for such types of operation from the relevant authority and the third type of qualification is that of the crew itself the crew should have that kind of training so that they are qualified to do landings and takeoff from high altitude airports so this was all in a320 pressurization system if you like this video hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel and if you haven't seen my previous videos do watch them and i would suggest that you go through the fcom for the deep understanding and use this video as a reference bye bye